Good morning. Welcome to worship. Welcome to victory. It is great to be together with you uh, as we wind, slowly wind down to the end of summer. I know. We got a little time left, though. Don't worry about it. I just want to prep you for it, get you mentally prepared. Um, it's okay. It happens. I look at the seasons as a reminder that God is in control. And that's a good thing. It's always a good thing. We're still in the season of Pentecost. Um, oh, I don't know. 13 more weeks, I think, in the season of Pentecost before we start the season of Advent. I'd just like to keep you... Uh, update as to where we are on the liturgical calendar as well as the secular calendar. Uh, it's good to find a rhythm, so to speak. Today, we're going to look at God's word to us from the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 5. And it's a reminder that every single day, God provides us with opportunities to shine his light and show his love. Uh, the opportunities are there every day. Uh, unfortunately, I'll speak for myself anyway, uh, I become so absorbed in what's going on in my world that I kind of fail to just open my eyes and look uh, at the lives of the people around me because I could, I could do a lot more good than I do if I just looked outward rather than be so wrapped up in my own goings on. So uh, we'll explore some ideas as to how we might better make the most of the opportunities that God provides to us to shine his light and love in a world of darkness and sin. Uh, most of what you need to know is going to be projected on the screen for you, the responses, uh, things like that. But in the worship folder, we always put the hymns uh, when, when available in four-part harmony, so you can sing along that way if you choose. Bible readings are in here as well that we're going to look at today. It's a blank space for notes on the top of page 8. For questions, comments, anything you find noteworthy during the sermon, uh, questions you have about the service, scribble those down and talk to me afterward or shoot me an email. My email address is on the front here as well. Uh, if I don't have the answer, I'll find it or we can find it together, but we might as well hack through whatever questions or issues you have about anything you hear or see here this morning. Uh, object lesson, check. There will be one of those. Um, and the kids who participated in Vacation Bible School are then, after the object lesson, going to share a song that they worked on during uh, our VBS camp out, which was, which was good, good time had by all. I also want to welcome those who are going to be worshiping with us later on this week on Cable Channel 15. Thank you for joining us on TV this fine day. As always, you have a standing invitation to worship live in person at Victory here if you're willing and able to do that. If not, just keep on watching on TV. It's all good. I'm glad to have you. Uh, you can go to the website. The web address will appear somewhere down here on the screen during the service. Uh, that might help to answer some additional questions you might have. Or just give the office a call. All right. Let's swan dive in. Page three in your worship folders, our opening hymn, With the Lord Begin Your Task. Please stand if you're able for this opening song as we sing together.
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, though you have saved us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we confess with shame our slowness to learn of him, our failure to follow him, and our reluctance to bear the cross. Forgive us for our heartless worship, our hesitant witness for Christ, our evasion of responsibility in your service, and our imperfect stewardship of your gifts. Forgive us that so little of your love has reached others through us, that we have been thoughtless in our judgments, quick to condemn, and grudging in forgiveness. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son Jesus Christ to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. Because of what Christ has done on the cross and by the command and authority given in John chapter 20, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray together. Merciful Father, since you have given your only Son as a sacrifice for our sin, also give us grace to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of his redeeming work and daily follow in his way through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The first lesson is from Proverbs chapter 9, verses 1 through 10. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine, and she has also set her table. She has sent out her maids and calls for the highest point of, from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come in here. She says to those who lack judgment, come eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of understanding. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insult. Whoever rebukes a wise man incurs abuse. Do not rebuke a mocker or, hate, or he will hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Instruct a wise man and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man and he will add to his learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 5 through 21. Live as children of light. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such as a man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ 
or, and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing, <clears throat> have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything, is, everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As a sign of our reverence and respect for the good news of Jesus Christ, please stand for this reading from the Gospel of John. <clears throat> John chapter 6, verses 51 through 69, Jesus presents a difficult teaching to his followers. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. <clears throat> Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. <clears throat> on hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? What if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Object lesson time. For those interested. Today is going to be, uh, it's going to be mighty familiar to those of you that were at uh, VBS camp on Friday. It's just going to be, it's going to be familiar. Um, kind of, because I'm kind of going to redo sort of what uh, Mr. and Mrs. Knott and Mrs. Whiteford, kind of what they led you through. Kind of want to review it because maybe not everybody was able to be there. So, remember what the theme was? What was the theme? Shout it out loud. Pass it on. What are we supposed to pass on? <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong about that, but what did it say on the rocks? All right, let's just stop with that one right there, because it said a lot of things on a lot of rocks. Jesus loves you. So the thing we're, the thi I mean, we can share a lot of things. We can share half of our peanut butter and jelly sandwich at lunch. We can share our pretzels. We can, okay, we can share lots of things. But what we were focusing on that day was passing along 
the good news that Jesus loves people. And this is not make-believe, pretend love. It's real love. Hang on one second. How do we, and I'll, I'll call on you for this. How do we know that Jesus loves us? What do you do? How do we how do we know that? Because he died on the cross for us. Yes. That is. Because it's a cross. I was trying to give you a hint. Okay? We know Jesus loves us because he gave his life on the cross. Now, why did he give his life on the cross? What good does that do? Uh, right, right. I like to say it this way. He saved us from our sins. He died on the cross to save us from our sins. Yep. Because he lived a perfect life. He offered it there. And then that, that canceled everything. Like a big eraser. All, the, all our sins are gone. He paid for it. He paid for it all. Now, that's good news because... You guys know John 3.16? Remember that goes? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So this is, see how all this fits together? We know Jesus loves us because he lived a perfect life, offered it there to wipe out all sins. You guys are forgiven, cross the board. Now, through faith in Jesus, you get to live forever in heaven. This is good stuff, really good. No matter what happens to us while we live, we know what happens when we die. That's good. That's really, really good. Now, again, you guys did a pretty cool, pretty cool thing that I kind of want to, I kind of want to try to replicate here. Remember, I don't have any dominoes. We're going to try it with this. Now, we talked about, uh, what was the guy's name in Arkansas? Billy Bob in Arkansas? Okay. And Sasha is here in Eden Prairie. And the question is, Let's say that I do share the good news about Jesus and what he did with somebody. What difference does that make? What difference is that? It's only one person. Billy Bob, we're going to say Billy Bob's here on the end. Billy Bob from Arkansas is on the end there. I thought Billy Bob was on the Okay, we can make him on. No, well, he's on. We're going to switch him. Switch him up. Okay? Notice how much easier it is having me set these up than you guys. Remember that? Remember how that went? It was a challenge. It was a big challenge. All right, so Sasha is down here on the end. And let's say, so what? So she tells one person, hey, you know what? And I'm not messing around. Jesus really loves you. <laughs> you she tells one person, Jesus loves you. And the person goes, seriously? That's awesome. Thanks. But it doesn't end there, right? Because then let's say that this is um, Jane, right? You just told Jane that Jesus loves her. And she's like, that is Pretty, that's pretty remarkable. That's amazing. He loved me so much he died for me so I could be with him forever in heaven. And then what happens? Jane tells who? Billy Bob. Bill, no, Billy Bob's here, dude. Okay, anyway, John. Okay? And then it goes, so let's see if this works. I hope it works. I practiced this twice. Go ahead. Ready? So it goes like this. Bang. And Billy Bob, Billy Bob heard about it from whoever, 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 whoever. So the song you're going to sing in just a little bit is called... It's called what? Okay, and how does the first line go? It, okay, let's stop there. That's good, we don't wanna to reveal too much. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. Just like it only takes one Lego to knock down 10 or 12 of them. It only takes a Sasha to end up having Billy Bob in Arkansas know that Jesus loves him. It only takes one person sharing the good news for a lot of people to find out. So we wanna do that, right? All right, let's pray, then we'll have a snack, and then well, I think what we'll do is we'll sing. I'll pass out the treat, then you can sing, but don't eat the treat until after you get back to your seat. How does that sound? You don't want to sing with airheads in your mouth. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying to pay for our sins so we could live with you forever in heaven. Thank you for that. Help us to tell other people about that great news that you love us, that you died for us, and we will live forever with you in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, line up. You know how that goes. And then people who are going to stay and sing, stay up. And you only know the song. But please save these until after you sing.
And sometimes it doesn't work quite how you hope it is. So, and I like my place to the stock of you getting good hopes. And you guys ready? You guys got it down? Alright, we'll let you move. Well done. Good summary. All right, we're going to join together in singing uh, the song on page seven, Renew Me, O Eternal Light. Grace and peace to you from God our Heavenly Father and from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in whose name we are together once again this fine morning. Uh, C.S. Lewis once commented, he wrote it down, but I'm going to paraphrase him. He said, uh, there are no mere mortals. Right? Sounds creepy. Does that make sense though? Or does it sound like science fiction? There are no mere mortals. I, didn't, I really didn't grasp it until I kind of read the whole thing in context and had somebody explain it to me. Uh, his point was that every single person you know uh, will live forever. Right? They'll either live forever in heaven or they'll live forever in hell, but they will live forever. So in that regard, they're immortal. Again, it took 
a little while to process that. Go, man, is he just exaggerating for the sake of impact? Or I mean, is this really? Is that a fair way to represent it? Uh, but it got me thinking. You know, everyone you know, then if this is true, everyone you meet, everyone you pass in the aisle at the grocery store, everyone you work with. Uh, everyone sitting around you today, everyone in the entire world is immortal because they're not going to stay dead. They live on and they'll be reunited with their body. So body and soul are going to live forever. And isn't that the definition of immortality? Anyway, th here's, here's the whole, well, not the whole quote, but in context so we can get a little better grasp of it. Uh, he writes, it is in the light of these overwhelming possibilities, it is, is, it is with the awe and the circumspection proper to them that we should conduct all our dealings with one another, all friendships, all loves, all play, all politics. There are no ordinary people. You have never met a mere mortal. Nations, cultures, arts, civilizations, these are mortal, and their life is to ours as the life of a gnat. But it is immortals whom we joke with, work with, marry, snub, and exploit. Immortal horrors or everlasting splendors. It speaks to the value of every human being. They're immortal. Not that that means they were less valuable, it would be less valuable if they weren't, but these are bodies and souls that are gonna live forever. They're going to live forever, either in heaven or in hell. I know, we don't like to talk about hell these days. It's not, it's not fun. It's not popular. It's not cool. Nobody likes it. But acknowledging it might make a difference in our willingness to make the most of every opportunity to reach out to people if we realize what's really at stake, that they are immortal. Now, think of it this way. I thought about this more than a few times. Um, I'm praying one of these days it actually motivates me to do more. Wouldn't it be amazing if you were to arrive in heaven and find, um, let's just say a few people waiting for you at the gate, not that there's a gate, just kind of, and they point at you and go, you, you, you are responsible, at least in part, for me being here you because you did this you said this you did that this that the other thing you deserve partial credit for me being here right now that would be awesome uh, and i really 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 hope that happens i would feel really terrible if it didn't for all of us i hope that does again i'm not sure that's the way it works but you see what i'm saying uh now, on the flip side here, and again, I don't think this is the, you know, God's going to follow this protocol on Judgment Day, although maybe, let's say, on the other side of that coin, let's say that uh, it's Judgment Day, and uh, there are two really long lines, of course. I think God's probably more efficient, but uh, there's the going to heaven line and the going to hell line, right? And you're waiting to be processed, uh, paying for your carry-on or whatever. And you and your other buddies in the going to heaven line are whooping it up like, Woo! We knew! We knew we were right! Knew it! <laughs> to the people in the going to hell line. And then you see a buddy of yours from college in the going to hell line. And he's standing there staring at you with like horror on his face. He's like, Dude, we were friends for 20 years. And you never thought it was important to tell me about this? Why didn't you tie me up and force me to listen to every word you had to say on this matter? Why didn't you drag me kicking and screaming to church? Now, I doubt that's the way it's going to go down on the last day, but man, I really hope that that kind of thing doesn't happen. Because uh, I got to admit, I got some people I've been friends with for 20 years that I have not shared the good news of Jesus with. And I have to ask myself right now, what on earth is stopping me? And I don't have a good answer. Maybe it's not cool. I, it, just, it doesn't make any sense. I gotta just move on, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. 
I don't know why I wouldn't share what is the most important thing in my life with somebody that I claim to care about. Everyone around you every day is immortal. They're going to live forever. Which is why God's word to us in Ephesians chapter 5 should, should hit us pretty hard. Not, not in a negative way, in a, wow, I got some work to do way. Here's the short one. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Make the most of every opportunity. Now, in our current cultural climate, it seems people are far more concerned about how other people are living their lives. And God's order, his command to us, is to worry about how you are living your life now. We, and let other people do their thing, that whatever. I can only control me. I am to live wisely. Not unwisely, I'm to live wisely. I am to do that. I am to make me, I am to make the most of every opportunity that God gives to me because the days are evil. What opportunities are we talking about here? Uh, it's revealed to us also in Ephesians. Uh, Paul's writing to the Christians living in Ephesus and he says to them, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. You and I are to make the most of every opportunity by shining the light of Christ in a world that's filled with darkness and sin and evil and other yucky things. That's kind of generic, and I get it. Uh, we'll try to flesh it out a little bit more. Uh, but we're to bring light where there's darkness in this world. That's what we're supposed to do. We do it by counteracting deeds of darkness with acts of, of love and light. Now, in an attempt to try to make this a little more detailed rather than just be light where it's dark, because that doesn't really help a ton, uh, some of you are probably familiar with the uh, prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, that prayer for peace. Um, it's also a really cool song. We should do this sometime for, for choir. Um, it begins, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. So this would be a good one to Google, uh, to print out, to post on your refrigerator. It gives a, a few more specifics of how we might make the most of every opportunity to live uh, as shiners of light and bringers of love to a world that's dark. Uh, he wrote, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. He continues. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Some good ideas. But all of those things involve us focusing less on ourselves and more on the people around us. Um, seeing their need, um, their hurts, and doing what we can then to bring light into their situation. It's a good, it's a good prayer. I never looked at it in this light. Pardon the pun. Uh, but it applies perfectly when we're looking for ideas of how we can bring uh, love and light the light of Christ into a place that is dark and filled with sin. Uh, my mom used to tell me, and she had a lot of ways of spoiling my fun, but these were two of them. One of them was, 
Uh, when I, 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 by the way, I was eight years old, and I'd be going out to play kick the can in the neighborhood, right? So, I mean, what terrible things could happen? But she would say, remember, other people are watching you. And for, I'm like, that's creepy. What do you mean people are watching me? And she explained one time, she's like, well, I mean, there are, you know, in the neighborhood, people know that we're a Christian family, and they're watching you to see if you act any differently than, than anybody else. And I don't know if that's true, that they actually were doing that, but it spoiled a lot of my fun, um, and it made me think. I'm like, what if, what if, what if other people are, if they happen to know that I'm a Christian, and they're watching me? What if? What, what, what are they seeing? So let's pretend, and I don't know that it's, that it's true, uh, but it sure messed with my mind. Let's pretend that it's true for a minute. That there are people who know that you guys are Christians, and they're watching. And maybe even taking notes. Just to see, what, is this anything that I would want to ever have a hand in? Would I want anything? I'm going to watch and just see if they do anything differently. What are people that are, if they are, what are they seeing? Are they seeing a life of, of love and care for other people? Or are they seeing what they see everywhere else? Self-absorbed people living sinful lives and not really thinking or caring too much about it. I don't know. You'll have to ask yourself that. Um, I continue to ask myself that. What if people are watching me? So Paul writes to the Christians living in the city of Philippi. He says to them, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And notice it doesn't say that other people are better than you. It just says consider them that way. Look at them and treat them as though they were better than you um, and deserved more than you. It's not the facts, but that's how we look at them and how we treat them. Uh, so again, part of it is us keeping our, our chins up, not staring down at ourselves, and then looking, you know, using our eyes to see other people, to see what they might need, uh, what they might want at any given point in time. Uh, Jesus makes himself clear on this matter as well. And he is referring to a parable where there were two lines. Uh, one for hell, one for heaven. Uh, the parable of the sheep and the goats. And he's talking to the sheep who were in line to go to heaven and he's explaining to them kind of what was going on. Uh, and they didn't really understand. Jesus says to them, I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And all the sheep in line are like, no, we really didn't do that because I never saw you, Jesus, in prison. Nor did I ever see you, Jesus, uh, hungry or thirsty. So no, I didn't. And of course Jesus says, yeah, whatever you did for the least of these other people on planet Earth, you did for me. We keep our heads up, we keep our eyes open, looking to people around us, rather than always focusing on ourselves. And then that's the first step in making the most of the opportunities that God presents to us every single day, is just seeing that those opportunities exist. Uh, it really, this sounds silly, it's both as simple and as complicated as this. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Super simple. <laughs> Super complicated. Love God most of all. Love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, that's easy to memorize. And that's important. Doing that every day will require decades, but start now. Love God most of all. Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, who is your neighbor? Well, you do. So, interestingly enough, in the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus makes it clear, and if you need to relook this parable up, look it up again. Who's our neighbor? In the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus makes it clear that your neighbor is anyone to whom you are kind. So, if you see a person in need and you help them, guess what? They're your neighbor. Uh, if, again, if you need to look up that, that parable again, 
uh, Jesus is talking to the Pharisee and says, um, who do you think was a neighbor to the guy that was in need? And the, even the Pharisee admits, the guy that helped him? He goes, yeah, yeah. We create neighbors when we show kindness to people. We make them our neighbor. So we don't have to wait around and go, well, that person doesn't live nearby me, so I don't need to help them. We make them our neighbor when we are kind to them. Now, there are additional, I think, useful ideas on the cover of the worship folder as well. Just the small words that, that surround the, the big words make the most of every opportunity. Read the list. Um, cut it out, put it on your refrigerator, put it in your cubicle. Uh, I, I don't know, whatever works. Uh, ideas will help. Uh, and you may get a chance to use some of them someday if we're keeping our eyes open uh, and looking around us. The goal is this, that other people in this world would see a difference. Maybe even not a stark and crazy, like, whoa, what is with that? But they would notice a difference between us and the way other people uh, approach matters or approach them and respond to them and their needs and whatever. Uh, it is about caring. It is about loving. Our, the goal is that others would see and experience the love of Jesus Christ through us. That's the goal. And that's a love that caused Jesus to willingly give up his life. We talked about this during the object lesson. On the cross to wipe out your sins, my sins, the sins of all people forever. Uh, we're not the only ones that are forgiven. Everyone on the planet is. They just some don't know it. That forgiveness is theirs through faith. And maybe, maybe we can play a hand in introducing them to Jesus and starting that faith relationship as we make the most of the opportunities God gives to us every single day. We share the love of Christ with other people, a love that caused Jesus to live, to die, and to rise so that we and all people could live with him eternally in heaven. So share the love of Christ. At some point, look at it this way. At some point in your life, somebody shared the good news of Jesus Christ with you or brought you kicking and screaming to church. Maybe you were only weeks old. Uh, but somebody, you didn't magically do this on your own. Somebody somehow, somewhere brought you, uh, introduced you to God and, and, and the love that he displays in Jesus. Our response is to pass it on. To share the love of Jesus Christ with other people now. Whether through kind words, caring actions, a verbal testimony, if it gets to that point, of what the difference Jesus makes in your life. But in order to do any of these things, we have to keep our, our heads up and our eyes open, focused on other people, not just ourselves. Uh, we can look to our own interests, but not only our own interests, also to the interests of other people. Remember that the people you encounter every single day, every single one of them, they're immortal. They're going to live forever. And you can have a hand in, in helping determine where they will live forever. It's, a, it's an important job. Look carefully for every opportunity to shine the light of God's love, to share the love of Jesus Christ with those people who are going to live forever. The days are evil, but never underestimate the power, the impact uh, that God's love can have in someone else's life. They may not know it. But I, was, I stopped at uh, a beverage establishment this morning to pick up some iced tea. I did that. And I had my black shirt on, but not my little white tab. I walked up and ordered my iced tea. And she said, oh, you're doing some fancy work today? I said, church. She goes, oh, yeah. Like she forgot that it was Sunday or whatever. And I was walking out to the car and I thought to myself, there are people that, we can't assume people know the gospel. And we can't assume that. They don't. It's been so long that it's been taboo that there are probably an entire generation of people who don't know really who Jesus is and what he's done. Uh, we can open doors and make the most of those opportunities by being kind, caring, uh, loving, uh, 
other-centered rather than self-centered, your godly influence just may lead someone into a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's important. Amen. May God's peace, which goes beyond our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds anchored in this Christian faith until together we all, and we pray all others, uh, receive the promised gift of eternal life in heaven. Amen. Let's confess our faith as Christians using the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's on the screen for you. Please stand as we confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As God's dearly loved children, we have the privilege now of worshiping, thanking, and praising Him through our tithes and our offerings. Please be seated while they're gathered. Any additional prayer requests you'd like to include in our as always, if you don't want to share your request out loud, that doesn't stop it from getting to God. He knows what's going on in your life, uh, the lives of your loved ones. He knows your wants, needs, desires. He grants the things that are in agreement with his perfect will for your life and theirs. And that's our prayer, that his will would be done. Let's pray that now. Please stand. Gracious God, thank you for all the blessings you give to us, including the opportunities you provide for us to show your love and share your good news with other people. By your power, Lord, keep our eyes open, keep our minds alert, keep our heads up looking at the world around us so that we're aware of other people and, and then able to make the most of the opportunities that you give to us to be lights in their darkness. Lord, we ask you to pour out healing on those who have needs of mind, body, or soul. Give them hope and patience in their hardships. Uh, we continue to pray for Gabe, Shelley, Beth, Alex, and my friend Tom as they seek healing from cancer. We're also in prayer for you, Lord, on behalf of our brother and sister in Christ, Dale and then Luke, as they continue the, the challenge of caring for their parents and their health issues as they age. Uh, they're certainly not alone in this. We pray for all those who are, are caring for loved ones. Uh, increase their stamina, uh, their devotion. Uh, we thank you for their, their love, their persistence, their willingness to care. Heavenly Father, we pray for uh, Alex, asking you to continue to heal her, but we're so grateful, Lord, for your power displayed uh, through the care of doctors and nurses uh, for the treatments that have been affected in removing the cancer from her body. We pray that as these final few rounds uh, conclude, she would be cancer-free for the rest of her natural-born life. We ask that in Jesus' name. I pray for my wife, Alice, Lord, as she's uh, had some struggles with her feet. Uh, pray for healing, freedom from pain, so she can resume uh, normal activities soon. We also pray for Jerry, Lord, as you've been so good to him over the years. We pray for continued strength and healing for his body, uh, freedom from pain as he recovers. Again, we ask that in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the gift of life and for another year of life on earth for Cooper Work, Aaron Hafner, Beckett Work, Tim Wolf, and Danielle Junker Gustafson. Bless and protect these children of yours throughout the coming year as you've been a source of strength and hope to them in the past as well. We're also thankful for another year together as husband and wife for Al and Susan Newville. Uh, be with them and bless them as they continue to grow together in faith and love. Lord, we pray for our president, asking you to give guidance and wisdom to him and to all who are in positions of authority in our land. Bring peace, prosperity, and unity to our nation and to the entire world. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on our Pass It On VBS camp out last Friday. Thank you for Andy and Sue, Jack and Julie and Lauren for their hard work and preparation. Bless our continued efforts to pass your love on to other people. Almighty God, finally bless our Bible study this morning. Bless and guide victory, our board of directors, and each one of us as we shine the light of your love beyond these walls. Strengthen us to invite other people to get to know you, to share what we know to be true. 
Give Victory Congregation spiritual, numeric, and financial growth so we can continue to increase our impact for your kingdom in this area. Almighty God, we ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's also taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. be seated. Thank you once again for being here today. I do appreciate it very much. Talk to me afterward if you have comments, concerns, questions, or shoot me an email. Um, either one works. Uh, a couple of very quick announcements. We're right about on time, so I'll wrap it up quickly. Uh, next week, you've uh, probably heard the verse, you know, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And we'll look at uh, those words and dissect them. Uh, also then, Bible study today. We're continuing, uh, we didn't quite finish last week, so we're talking about what the Bible says about patience and impatience. One of the interesting questions we posed last week was, oh, I'm gonna forget how this went. Does, does waiting produce patience or 
Does anybody remember? remember? It was a deep question. Or is waiting what causes suffering? Something along those lines. I do want to point out that I'm, an, I'm preparing a, a fancy schmancy new Bible study for fall. Um, and it's a lot of work, but it's, I think it would be cool. It's on apologetics, which is essentially um, a Christian defense of the Bible and its teachings. Um, and I'm basing it on this uh, C.S. Lewis Institute basic apologetics course. It's kind of cool. It, it, I think it will better equip us to simply have conversations with people and not be scared when they bring something up. It's, it has to be done in a completely calm, cool, collected, rational manner. You're not going to argue about anybody into anything. Um, but it starts with like the cosmological argument. Is there any way, any way at all to argue for the existence of God based on the existence of the universe? Is there, and, and then the next one is uh, you know, like the, the, the internal argument. All right, is there anything within us as human beings that we can argue uh, serves as evidence that there's a creator? So there are, I'm up to like eight, probably like 12 units. It's interesting stuff. I'm finding it fascinating, so maybe you will too. We'll start that uh, the Sunday after Rally Day, which is September 9th. <coughs> Second. There's some goodies over there. Stick around for those if you're able. We'll fire our Bible study in about 15, 20 minutes. Um, take a second, introduce yourselves to the people around you. God bless your week. Hope to see you next Sunday.